Mounting a router to a table greatly expands its use, but you can't use a router table or a handheld router on the end grain of small or narrow stock. It would be too tippy and wouldn't be safe or accurate. On this video, we're building a different kind of jig just for that purpose. Hi, I'm Paul and this is OpenWoodShop.com. What I've been working on lately is a jig that I've wanted to build for a while. I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but Stumac.com calls it an acoustic neck joint routing jig. I'm building it to make the mortise and tenon joint that join the neck and body of a guitar together, but I think there may be some other uses as well. Although I've had the basic idea in my head for a long time, when I saw the free drawings on Stumac website, and I'll post them in the comments below, I decided to go for it and just build theirs. Stumac's purpose with these free drawings is to sell these very beautiful templates that allow you to make two common types of mortise and tenon joints that will join the neck and a body of a guitar precisely to each other. Along with those beautiful templates comes a beautiful price, so I'll be making my own templates from plywood here as well. If you have a CNC, then this is going to be a snap because a lot of fussiness is going to be required in order to make sure that the top is exactly perpendicular to the base and to make accurate templates that also slide into the top with no side play. Starting as per the plans with a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood cut 20 inches by 14 inches, a 4 inch by 1 inch slot is cut out of the middle of the top. This allows space for the router bit when in use. One of my changes is to add slots for the carriage bolts. These slots are to give clearance for the head of the bolts and another slot will be cut all the way through for the shaft. You'll see them in action shortly. I need to mount my jig to the side of one of my workbenches and it needs to be easily mounted and unmounted. The block and dowel set on top of the workbench to line up the two threaded inserts to securely mount the jig onto the side of the workbench. Ninety degree gussets are attached and they need to be very accurate so take care there. The tabletop or top board is a three quarter inch piece of plywood cut 12 inches by 14 inches with a 4 inch by 7 inch hole cut near the middle of it. And this is where I think Stumac made a mistake. Looking at the top view you'll notice that the two sides are 3 inches wide but the slot is routed out to 7 and 3 quarters inches wide. Adding that up means that the top would come out to 13 and 3 quarters inches wide, not 14 inches. So the sides should be 3 and an eighth inches. The templates themselves are 7 and 3 quarters inches wide and have to fit well within the routed out slot. So take care there when making this jig. To hold the templates in place, two threaded inserts are set into the top board. I'm using 8 by 32 machine screws with the wider truss heads. These are the same machine screws that are used on most drawer pulls and cabinet handles. The slots in the templates have to line up perfectly and I don't have Stumax measurements on their template slots. I put them in at about an inch and if I ever get Stumax templates I can easily put in new inserts to the top board. Another problem that bewitched me for the longest time was lining up my mortise and tenons. Forward and back, side to side, that was no problem, but I couldn't get rid of the twist. I finally realized that being able to rotate the top might be the answer. The top board attaches to the upright with two screws. Taking one of the screws out allowed me to slightly rotate the top. The gussets were three quarters of an inch stock so I changed them to one and a half inch stock and sunk a hanger bolt in each. I cut slots to the top to allow the hanger bolts through and then made knobs to secure them down. A little glue on one side of a shim allowed me to get the top back perpendicular to the upright again. The same thing was done on the other side using the now single screw as the pivot point for the second slot. If you look closely you'll see a board clamp below the template. Rotating the top, I was now able to get my template slot parallel to that board. So it was time for another test and another failure. Maybe those pricey Stumac templates were the answer after all. But then I had my aha moment. The first thing I did was make a centering template for the mortise side template. 
I cut a piece of Lexan the width of the slot and carefully scribing a line down the middle of it, I colored it in with a Sharpie and then wiped off the excess with some mineral spirits, leaving a perfect hairline down the middle. I also rounded off the ends and screwed a piece of wood onto it, giving me a handle. I had already made a square to help plumb the workpiece. My new plastic template made it easy to line up with the center line scribed on the test piece. I knew this would all help, but it really wasn't what the aha moment was all about. Here you can see me taking the test piece out and turning it around. I'm doing this so that I can line up the second template, the tenon template, but from the other direction. That is, my mortise template comes in from one side of the jig, and then the tenon template comes in from the other direction. Because having both templates come in from the same side of the jig means that if your template or jig is off at all, you will be doubling the error. This way, any error is counteracted when you bring in your second template from the other direction. On this test, I wasn't very careful with my side-to-side -side alignment, but there it is. The twist is finally gone. And while it may look like a piece of scrap wood to you, to me, it was a thing of beauty. After all that, things get real. I'm ready to try it out on a real project. Some time ago, I made a cigar box guitar and started making the pieces of a cigar box ukulele. But the pieces have been hanging around the shop for way too long, so it's time to make it happen. Of course, the problems were not all solved yet. The box doesn't fit through the jig top board, so I'll have to find a way to center to the template. But for now, we're moving forward. And because the box now sits 3 eighths of an inch lower, my router bit bearing needs a spacer put in to lift the bearing up by 3 eighths of an inch. That also means my router chuck can only grip one half of an inch of the bit. Of course, Stu Mac has a bit that is another half inch longer, but that will have to wait. I don't want a router bit flying around the shop though, so the chuck will be extra tight and I'll cut very slow. It doesn't surprise me that the mortise is a sixteenth inch off center, so I would have to move it up a thirty second of an inch, but I may just leave it. Although centering on the box will have to be fixed, and I do have an idea for that. So the spacer comes off the bit, and it's time to cut the tenon on the neck. Of course, the fit is good, and my cigar box ukulele is one step closer to completion. But that's for another video. Routing on narrow and small pieces has other uses that I'm exploring. There are different router bits and other possibilities for templates, and you can trace around objects like this half-inch spacer. You can also set up for drilling. On a small test piece like this, a drill press works better, but you wouldn't be able to do that with a longer piece. There is so much more I wanted to cover, but that will have to wait. In particular, I'm still working on making better templates, maybe even some out of Lexan, so I'll have to make a video on that. For subscribers, past, present, and future, Thanks. And please leave your comments and likes. I don't make money at this, but your support is what keeps me making these videos.